Hey, Carla Howard. It's great to catch up with you again. How have you been? I'm good. How are you? I am. We've dug out of a foot of snow today, so I'm good. I'm happy. The sun's back out. A lot of the snow is melting. How is it out? And uh, I'm jealous. I wish I was out there already. Yeah, you, you don't want to know. It's like 80 degrees, breezy. Um, the wind chimes out in the backyard or singing a song. So yeah, a little bit different atmosphere than what you're dealing with. Don't ask me in the middle of summer, though. <laughs> I know, I know. You know, I never, the, the summers didn't bother me too much, but it's the winter and this time of year that I love to be there. But anyway, as you know, I will be out in Scottsdale in a couple of weeks because on March 28th, you and I are doing an event together with some other fantastic people, which we'll hit on a little bit. But we wanted to spend time, I appreciate you jumping online with me so that we could talk a little bit about this amazing event that we have coming up on women and leadership and not only how women can grow and develop as leaders, both for themselves and in their organizations, but also, you know, getting some of those different perspectives and questions on the table of some of the challenges that women face in today's work climate. And I thought you would be a great person to not only have at the event, but do a little bit of a preview because you're a speaker, an author, a mentor to many women. And I'm so excited to dive into that with you tonight and then in two weeks at the actual event. Yeah, well, thank you so much. And it's an honor really to, to be able to do this work. Uh, something I'm so passionate about and the things that you and I have talked about, Scott, just so resonate with me that, you know, there's so many events where it's simply women talking to other women about how we solve this problem, right? With getting more women in leadership, but not just getting them uh, in those higher level roles, but really making it so that they're ready, they're, they'll be successful, and they're getting mentoring and coaching from the men who have held those positions for so many years. And the, it, the thing that really resonates with me is we have to have men be part of that conversation yeah. and deliver that coaching to women so that they understand how to be successful. And alongside that, build their confidence and just small tweaks in the way that they deliver messages and speak in meetings, it will make a huge difference in the perception of their readiness to take on those roles. So yeah, a great topic and so timely with everything that's going on. It is, and, and you, you just hit on a few keywords that really click with me and trigger something. So a lot of people that I've spoken with about the event are, are referencing the timing how it is such a good time to have this conversation. We need to have it, we wanna have it. And here's the thing, and this is how I look at a lot of things in life. It doesn't need to be negative. Some of it is hard conversation. I like mm -hmm. to acknowledge that, but it's not negative. There's no suffering involved. It's actually a beautiful thing where we can come together and work through productively and move forward on some of these topics that honestly, I believe, and I have some perspective on it, and we'll hit on a little bit today and a lot on March 28th, but you know, some of it is really just a matter, I think, if we get it on the table and share and talk through it, we'll make a lot, not just a little, but a lot of progress. I think it's just the act of getting these conversations moving with several different perspectives. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And, uh, you know, as I said, a lot of times it's a, it's a small change in the way we present ourselves and our ideas uh, that uh, as women professionals, we don't even really realize that we're doing, right? And it just changes the conversation. It's, it's small changes, I'll say, but they can be very difficult to make. Uh, so I'll give you an example. One of the things that I see over and over again in the workplace is women apologizing. And I, a lot you know, they'll start with, I'm sorry, or I, you know, uh, can I interject here? Sorry. And it, it's such a difference and brings such a different power when you simply say, I've got something I'd like to add. And then you add your perspective and mm -hmm. it comes across as not only much stronger, but then you have that equal seat at the table. And it's funny because I don't see a lot of men doing that. Um, and I, I just think it's, you know, Women trying to be considerate and finding a gentle entrance into a conversation. So it's those small nuances and changes in the way that we present ourselves that we can make that will make us come across as A, more confident, B, more credible, but more importantly, as an equal in the discussion. Which is, which is how it should be. And yes. <laughs> we want, and we want to give that opportunity. You know, let me ask you to expand on that just a little bit too. So as a, as an author and a speaker and a mentor and a leader yourself, 
uh, for many years. You know, you and I go back. We, we didn't work closely together, but we were in the same organization about 12 years ago. Yes. And you've been on the front lines with so many people. Have you heard, you know, even in, in your co coaching capacity, have you been hearing about a lot of these topics for a long time and they just haven't gotten enough attention? Or do you feel like in the last year or two, some of this, um, like hearing the voices in meetings in the workplace setting and the need for that is some of it come or become more prominent just in the last couple of years. What's your experience with it? Yeah, I think, I think the acknowledgement that we need more women in leadership is a, is a fairly recent topic of general conversation. I think women have been talking about it for a long time, but in terms of organizations really looking at the difference that that diversity can make, that's a, that's a fairly new development within, I'd say, the last five to seven years. I, th I think there's been some discussion before that, but really moving the needle is, is, is just beginning. And uh, as I, I look at just the, the political landscape and then uh, some things that are happening, like the Me Too movement, you know, what's interesting about that to me is it's got a, both a positive and a negative impact, right? As many things do. So the positive impact is uh, more women really looking at how we support each other, because to be clear, we have not done a good job of that in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of, of powerful women out there who have not reached down and really supported women alongside them to bring them up. Uh, but, but the other side of that is the, you know, that Me Too movement, as I was saying, it's, it's got the positive because it's bringing women together and, and really showing that support and how we, we lift each other up. The unfortunate thing is it's, it's caused men to be a little bit fearful. So I've, I've read several articles and I've heard men that, you know, I'm, I'm colleagues with talk about their concern about being alone with a woman going out to dinner and, mm -hmm. you know, having a, a business conversation, but how is that perceived? So it, it's really, I guess, challenging times in a sense, because yes, we have this great opportunity, but as women, we're going to really have to position ourselves well so that men like you are comfortable having that conversation and building that tight relationship so that you can have those sponsors and mentors at the executive level that are going to bring you up alongside. And I, I just think that that is just so worthy of a genuine conversation about how we make that successful in this climate. All put so well, so perfectly. And uh, again, I'm sitting speaking with Carla Howard, author, speaker, mentor, leadership guru, leadership coach, and executive. And in, on March 28th in Scottsdale at the ASU Kerr Cultural Center, Carla and I are teaming up along with some other great people to bring these topics, bring these conversations to the forefront for an audience for you if you see this and you're in Arizona pencil in the night of March 28th because this is the start of movement forward in not only having the conversations but you know what kind of actionable steps can we take and that's what I wanted to trickle into now with you Carla as you laid a lot of such great groundwork is you know what do we want people to get so we get people in the room that night for two hours and you're going to have great opportunity to connect and network and then take part in really good conversation about how we all can grow as leaders, how women can grow as leaders and build their confidence. What, else, what do we want people to walk out of that building thinking about that night? Oh, gosh, so many things, right? One thing that comes immediately to mind is really that difference between a coach, a mentor and a sponsor because those are three very different roles and you might need one or all three at any point in your career. And while I really encourage women to find a strong woman leader who they respect, that they can get coaching or mentoring from many times, the person that they need to be a sponsor is going to be an executive male in an organization. Not always there, you know, there are women out there who can fill that role, but a sponsor is really someone who is going to support you, put your name out there uh, behind closed doors when those important meetings are happening where resource decisions are made for mm -hmm. who's going to lead the next super cool project or uh, who's next in line for that promotion. And we all know that, yes, there's the application process, but more often when it comes to higher level positions, 
those are discussions among executives where those candidates are identified. And who is in the room today is the leading men of the organization, sprinkled in with a few women. Mm -hmm. uh, but so as women leaders, how do we position ourselves so that our names are put on the table when those important conversations happen? And I believe that's through strategically choosing the right sponsor who's going to support you behind closed doors. That is such a great point and actionable step that we'll unpack a lot more that night. But if I can interject too, is so, you know, having been at CBS Health for five and a half years, including three right there in Scottsdale, and I was so fortunate, and I truly mean this, I worked with and for several directors and VPs and in government programs, and I got to sit in a lot of meetings with higher-ups for three years straight. And in addition to just soaking in all the wisdom and things that I can learn and things that worked well and a lot of things that didn't work well, you, you hit it on the head. I can honestly say, and this isn't a judgment or criticism of CVS Health, this is how it is in a lot of organizations, it was probably like a five to six to one ratio of men to women of those in, in the leadership teams. And, and the women were great. And, you know, their role was relevant, needed, but they were outnumbered. And I would say this too, you could see a dynamic in the room at times, not every single meeting where the men kind of defaulted and looked to themselves for to each other first before they looked to the female leader in the room. Regardless of her title, position, how good she was, how maybe average she was, they typically, and, and I'm a guy, I know I've done it myself. We sometimes just by default will look to the other men in the room. It's our comfort zone. Of course. And, and so like that's why what you're saying resonates and we need to get those voices um, heard more in, the, in those rooms. Yeah, no, absolutely. And you know, I know it's because I'm a woman, um, but when I'm in those executive meetings, I always do a quick percentage check, right? What percentage do we have in the room of women? And it's not a critical check. It's just more partly curiosity, partly how are we progressing and just being aware. You know, I think there's a, there's a lot to be said for being aware and thinking strategically about how am I going to play this game as a woman leader, uh, based on these odds, right? These percentages. So it's typically 15 to 20% are women. And, and it's funny because I was in a meeting just this week with a group of executives and it, it, it ended up very unusual that it was three women and one man. And so we're, we're sitting down to the table and he looked at me and he said, wow, I'm outnumbered. And I started laughing and I said, now you know how we feel in meetings. And he just laughed and he goes, touche, you know. I mean, but it, it just did not really occur to him that what that felt like to be outnumbered until he was shocked that, wow, it's one guy and four women. This is, this is odd, <laughs> you know. Um, but, you know, it's, uh, and it's not a bad thing, I don't think. It's just a fact, you know. Um, and I work for an amazing organization that has many women in the executive ranks and is incredibly supportive of, of upward mobility for women. I, I find, and I have actually worked for women for the last six years in this organization and have had the pleasure of having great leadership. So I, I know that it's out there and it's possible. Uh, the, the first step is really being aware and then thinking strategically about how you navigate you know, knowing that many of those decisions are going to be made by closed doors with the majority of the people in the room being the men. Yeah, yes, for sure. I agree. And I, I can't wait to talk about that more, not only March 28th, but, you know, going forward. And let's, let's spend the last couple of minutes on this. I'll tee it up and then you, you run with it a little <laughs> bit. So one of my, as a leadership and career coach, one of my foremost principles and tenets is personal accountability. Um, it's nothing new. It's nothing revolutionary. We've heard and read about this for years and years. We know how critical it is. But I, I am 100% you know, steadfast in the fact that we need to be accountable no matter what our situation, no matter what our background, no matter what our gender and anything else you can come up with. And what is your, and I want to, I, I look forward to getting into that a little bit that night too about how important it is to take ownership of our careers and no, and you know, I would say with some of the advice you just gave, it's an incumbent on all of us to look for role models, to look for mentors, to look for sponsors, women and men. And you know, what's your take a little bit on and how we can preview this somewhat for March 28th, either 
the principle of personal accountability or one of the other ones that is important regardless of whether you're a male or female. How do you take your career to the next level and or just keep moving it forward? You just gave a great example of a actionable step in finding a sponsor and getting our voices heard in some of those meeting rooms. What's one of the principles for an individual to just say, if I do this, if I build this into my life as a system and a habit and not just a once in a while nice to have, I will grow, my career will grow. Will grow. Yeah, oh man, that, that opens up so many uh, exciting topics. So I'll cover two. Uh, the first one is always finding a way to yes. And that's a, that's a guiding principle on my team. It, it doesn't mean that you say yes to the exact request. Uh, because if we did that, you know, we, there's just not enough time in the day. But there's always a way to provide support and to be helpful. And I always, well, I, I hope I always do, but I really focus on how to project openness, kindness, and deliver support to everyone in the organization. On the and that's just more what you want to be known for. So, you know, you want to think about what's my brand? So what is my brand going to be in this organization? What do I want to be known for? And then take action on that every single day. That should be what guides every decision that you make. But on the personal accountability side specifically, always acting with integrity and doing the right thing. And that's an old saying, but, you know, whether anyone is watching or not. And in every situation, even when it's tough, that you stop and you think, is this what I wanna be known for, right? And then make that decision. So I'll, I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. uh, several years ago, I was standing in the bullpen with three men and one of them said, you know, it was early in the morning, we're having coffee and he said, hey, um, I've got a joke that that reminds me of. It's a little bit off color, but if, do you mind if I tell it? Well, I had a decision to make right then on how I'm going to handle that. What do I want to be known for? Do I, you know, just stay so they'll like me better? Do I make a, you know, comment like this is totally inappropriate and stomp away? What do I do? So I knew I didn't want to be known for any of those things. And I just said, listen, guys, you know, to be honest with you, that is something I'm not comfortable with. So I'm, I'm going to get back to my desk. I've got some things to do. I'll leave you guys, um, you know, to chat and we'll catch up another time. And I went back to my desk and I didn't really think about it anymore. And afterwards, one of the guys came to my office and he, not, he came in, he goes, hey, can I talk to you for a minute? And I said, sure. So he closed the door and he said, I just want to tell you how much respect I have for you for the way that you handled that. I stayed and I don't know why I stayed and I was uncomfortable. The joke wasn't even that funny. But what really impressed me was that you held true to your values and you walked away, but you didn't do it in a way that it left us with a choice to make. It, it didn't push your choice on us. And I share that because he'll remember that long after, you know, he probably doesn't remember the joke today, right? But he remembers how I handled that. That personal accountability, you've got to take the responsibility every day to make actions and decisions based on what you want to be known for and what your personal brand's going to be. Because one ding in that is also going to be remembered. Phenomenal, phenomenal stuff. And you and I both love to help people. I cannot wait to do this collectively with you. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to learn a lot. And again, March 28th, the ASU Kerr Cultural Center in Scottsdale, Arizona, 530 to 8 p.m., Carla Howard, who you've just gotten a really good flavor for. Thank you for sharing, by the way, some stories, some good introductions to some really meaty, substantive, actionable things that we're going to talk about that night. It's all about women in leadership, leadership growth, taking accountability, by the way, which I love. And, you know, what are some of the things that are going to help you as females and us as an organization to gain that confidence and hear all of our voices. Let's get those conversations started. Carla, I'm really excited for that. Two weeks away. Yes. I could talk about it for hours. I don't know about you. <laughs> I, for hours, so. I could too. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you in warmth and sun, by the way, very, very soon. Excellent. It's so good to talk to you, Scott. Thanks, Carla. See you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>